Palace, Tower of London, Tower Bridge and St Paul's Cathedral. But what about, have you seen the dinosaurs that are in an enclosure in Crystal Palace Park? Have you seen them? Or indeed the windmills, one of the windmills that used to be around London at a time when there were green fields. That is what this programme is all about, Secret London, which I think will become part of a series. That there is so much to see beyond the obvious things. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but there's so much more. So, for example, I'm going to show you the time when the Romans occupied uh, London and this can be seen in many places including All Hallows Church, All Hallows by the Tower to give its full name. So next time you go to the Tower of London then cross the road to the church and you can learn a lot when the Romans occupied London around about AD 50. So are you going to come with me? Let's cross the road shall we? Next time you visit the Tower of London, pop over the road to the Church of All Hallows by the Tower. Dating from before the Tower, it was founded in AD 675 during the Roman settlement and has played a part in many historical events over the centuries, some quite murky. Having admired its impressive interior, as you make your way down to the crypt, First, pause beneath the organ pipes for the oldest surviving Saxon arch in the City of London. The top of the arch is made up of Roman floor tiles. In the crypt is the Roman pavement and several artefacts from their occupancy. Beneath the high altar is the Undercroft Chapel and it was here that Knights Templars, accused of heresy in 1311, were detained during their trials in the church above. Before leaving All Hallows, don't overlook the font cover carved by Grinling Gibbons from Limewood, for which he was paid £12. The Romans left in the 4th century and today you would have to look hard for evidence of their occupation. But with the rebuilding of London, with soaring skyscrapers and new underground lines, important artefacts are periodically discovered and preserved. During the building of the Guildhall Art Gallery in 1988, archaeologists rediscovered the walls of a Roman amphitheatre that would have been a visible feature of the city skyline but lost for centuries. Now preserved beneath the art gallery it has been imaginatively lit to give the impression how it might have looked but it was a devil to photograph. I was forced to bump up the ISO 2800 Around AD 200, a defensive wall was built around the city and sections of it can be still seen today, particularly near Tower Hill Station, guarded by Trajan, Roman Emperor from 98 to 117. But only the lower part of the wall is Roman, the upper section is medieval. Remnants of the wall suddenly appear around the perimeter of the City of London, near today's financial hub, and especially in the neighbourhood of London Wall, with the most impressive section in Noble Street. It was not until the 17th century that the City of London expanded into the surrounding green fields, the start of a process where villages such as Brixton, a name, incidentally, thought to have originated from a Saxon lord, and Harrow were absorbed into what became Greater London. Their boundaries now merged imperceptibly into neighbouring communities. The population of London expanded from 1 million in 1800 to over 6 million a century later, to become a global political, financial and trading capital. 
Today, the boundary of Greater London extends into the green fields that still remain, especially within the London boroughs of Croydon and Bromley, that now cover large swathes of the North Downs that were previously administered by Surrey and Kent councils. It may not come as a surprise that some of the buildings associated with rural industries outside the City of London have survived the onslaught of the capital, such as windmills, which would have been found in open country. Shirley Windmill, not far from Croydon, is now surrounded by housing, and others exist, mostly in good repair, and they include Brixton, Upminster, and Wimbledon Common. Some have special open days with demonstrations of traditional crafts. London is blessed by having many parks, commons and open spaces, but the most unusual and original is just behind St Pancras Station, sandwiched between trains departing for Paris and boats gliding sedately by on the Regent's Canal towards Little Venice and beyond. Camley Street Natural Park opened in 1985 and is run by London Wildlife Trust, and entry is free. Prior to the 17th century, long before the construction of St Pancras and King's Cross stations, the area would have been woodland until London expanded. Another haven of peace away from people and traffic is the Temple, south of Fleet Street. Although outside the Roman Wall, it is situated within the current boundary of the City of London, with its own jurisdiction. It is self-governing and outside the control of the Mayor of London, and Temple Church, like Westminster Abbey, is a royal peculiar and answers to the Crown and not any bishop. Within its ancient walls is one of the main legal districts in London, a centre for English law. The Royal Courts of Justice are just across the road. Founded by the Knights Templar, its church dates from around 1163, the oldest part being the Round Church, which was consecrated in 1185. It was seriously damaged during World War II and subsequently restored. Because of its isolation and distance from busy roads, it is used by the BBC as a recording venue for classical music. Following a visit to the church, allow time to wander around the grounds and gardens of Inner and Middle Temple. So what about the dinosaurs? I hear you ask. We haven't seen them yet. Well, they are at Crystal Palace Park a name perhaps more familiar with many of you for a famous football team currently at the time of recording in the Premier Division. So I sincerely hope that by the time you watch the recording, they will still be there. I'm sure they will be. Anyway, we're looking for uh, dinosaurs. So come with me down to the park. And indeed, if we go down to the woods today, I'm sure we're in for a big surprise to quote the song, but that was about teddy bears. We're going to look for dinosaurs, aren't we? Unveiled in 1854, the Crystal Palace dinosaurs were originally intended to complement Joseph Paxton's Glass and Iron Palace. There are 30 life-sized sculptures created by Benjamin Waterhouse Hawkins from reconstituted stone. It is believed that the word dinosaur was coined at this time. Recently the dinosaurs have undergone some TLC and are displayed in a fenced enclosure to protect them from extinction. Unfortunately, the Crystal Palace burnt down in 1936, and only its foundations plus a few features remain, but the views over Kent on a good day are still magnificent and worth the climb to the top of the park where the BBC transmitter stands. Music 